now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, live from Harlem in New York, it's the Ramble with me, I'm Alex Bennett, and we go until midnight tonight from the East Coast of the United States. Hello to Larry Brown, better known as Bubbles. Hello, Bubbles. Not to be confused with Hello, Larry, a short-lived sitcom in the 70s. A, a short-lived sitcom, yes, starring... Was, who was who the was great it? McLean Stevenson. McLean Stevenson, right. I forgot all about McLean Stevenson. But we do remember Hello, Larry as one of the biggest failures in television history. So, And I think he uh, uh, that was a bad decision because he left MASH to do that. <laughs> right, right. And what did we ever hear much from McLean Stevenson after that? I, I think that was it, but he, I remember I used to see him on. He was actually a very funny guy. Yes, but on, well, he was on he was on Match Game a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm saying he was a funny guy on game shows. Yeah, and and that's a place it's not hard to be funny in, <laughs> because compared to say, uh, Tody Fields, <laughs> you know, well, although Tody Fields was pretty funny actually. Now that I think of it. You remember Tody Fields? Uh, vaguely. She used to be on Merv a lot. Yes. Yes. And uh, she, uh, I think she lost her leg. That was she what She had it. diabetes, lost a leg. She was kind of, uh, kind of chubby, kind of, uh, I think she was like vaguely funny, right? I think uh, I, I was watching her on, um, on YouTube recently uh, just because I, I hadn't paid much attention to her. And she was not unfunny she was she was pretty good actually as you know for a female comic I think she died before she was 50 <laughs> yeah did you get that for a female comic for a female <laughs> you know what I used to get all the time and it used to bother me is uh, why don't you have more female comics on your show I said if there were more female comics I would I mean, there was a paucity in the amount of female comics out there compared to the male comics, right? Oh, when I started, I think there was three female comics, Paula Poundstone and Carrie Snow and... Uh, um, Sue Murphy. Sue Murphy. Yeah, yeah, that was it. You know, and I often said, there, and, and some people said, well, why aren't, and, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, just disagree with me entirely on this. They said, why don't you think there are more female comics and I said because females are not raised to be funny does that make sense absolutely because what happens is a kid a guy guys go out in the field and out in the play with each other and and um, they, they they fart and they make fart jokes and they make this joke and that joke and they act goofy, right? Guys act mm -hmm. goofy when they're... That's part of our upbringing is being goofy. And um, girls are told to maintain their dignity. You know, be be a... a, a be a, a... What do you call it? A nice little girl. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing more undignified, I think, than being a stand-up so, comic. So girls don't know how to be goofy. And, and I think that's pretty much true because they're just not socialized to be goofy. Now, it may, right. I don't know if it's different today. I don't think we have that many more female comics than we had then. No, oh, there's a lot now. There's a lot, but not, still not proportionately to the amount of male comics. You get what I'm saying? Like, I, for instance, you want to talk about great female comics. I think one of the greatest is Sarah Silverman. I think she's amazing. Uh, and um, we had in the old days we had people like Phyllis Diller, but she was a rarity. You know? Well, she would be. A, I think Phyllis Diller was probably the pioneer. She was the first woman comic I'd ever seen. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there were many female comics. Well, you see, the female Joan Rivers. 
Well, the female comics before that time were actually in movies. You know, they were doing comic roles in movies. And I always felt that, for instance, um, Lucille Ball, especially when she was younger, she was a Ford model. I mean, she was a pretty good-looking woman, right? Wow. And for her to suddenly be as goofy as she became on television was giving up a lot of that inbreeding they did with her as she was raised as a girl. You know, be dignified, look pretty, uh, get all dressed up, you know, blah, 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 blah. And yet uh, I always admired uh, Lucille Ball, who could give up that ability to look beautiful, to look goofy. And, and so I always admired Lucille Ball for that. Uh, later on, she kind of became crappy, but, you know. Yeah, that show was pretty bad, although apparently she was a... Uh Apparently she was a hard, hard-nosed businesswoman. <laughs> yes. Well, what show are you talking about? The Lucy Show. The Lucy Show. Yeah, yeah that was a ter- terrible show. That's yeah. where they fuzzed out her face and stuff like that. You know. <laughs> yeah, they they did did that to keep her from looking ugly. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so I often said that female comics just didn't do well because they weren't. Uh, um, uh, they weren't trained to be that way. Guys just, you know, we're goofy. We act goofy. You don't, you know, you don't mind being goofy, do you? No, yeah, that's part of being a comic. I think, uh, well, the, there was that show about the amazing Mrs. Meisel. Meisel, yeah. Meisel. Yeah. yeah. And that was about, uh, I guess, in er- early times of women breaking into comedy. And trying to, and not being taken seriously. Right. You know, and... uh and I mean, there there were women who were funny. I mean, uh, I'm trying to think of women I had on my show that made me laugh. Sue Murphy never made me laugh, never made me laugh. But I'm trying to think who we had on females. We had one lesbian comic on, uh, and I'm trying to remember her name now. And I thought she was terrific. I thought she was great, you know. And and uh, but then again, isn't that close to being uh, being raised a guy? <laughs> you know, I mean, but who was it? I can't remember. Yeah, Sabrina Matthews. That's Sabrina. Her. Oh, sure, I love Sabrina. Sabrina was a terrific comic. Terrific. Yeah. Is she still around at all? That I don't. She's not here. I think she moved to the East Coast. Okay, I should try and find her if she's on you the should. East Coast. Yeah. yeah. No, because she was she was terrific. She was just terrific. But. Uh, you know, we do have some good female comics today. Uh, I think, uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Schumer, Amy Schumer. Uh, I'd like to not like her, but I do. I think she's quite funny, you know. Um, and and she's she writes good jokes. That's what's great about her. So, anyway, any yeah. female comics you've seen today that interest you? Uh, let's see. There's a couple of local here that no one would heard of that are good, but uh, what was I trying to think of? Um, female comics. Uh, you had Ellen on in her early days. Yes, we did. We did. In fact, I hired her for the Frost Amphitheater. That's right. Yeah. 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 Uh, and uh, she, I always, you know what I always said about her? Uh, I said. We all knew she was a lesbian. Okay, the only person didn't know she was a lesbian, I think, was Ellen. But anyway, <laughs> um, we we all knew she was a lesbian, but she didn't come out, right? And I one day on the air, I I outed her by saying, if only Ellen would come out as a lesbian, she would help the cause. Okay, because she's likable. People like her. Remember how her own persona was being likable. She's very likable, yeah. And I said, so all America kind of fell in love with Ellen DeGeneres, and I said, if she'd just come out, she'd do a, just an a amazing amount of good. And she finally did. And I went on the air, and I said, congratulations. You know, you really did the right thing. And I think she did more to advance uh, gay causes than almost any other single person because she was, you know, she was on the cover of Time magazine as having come out. You know, so, I mean, it did a lot of good. 
did a lot of good. She, she should be proud of herself for what she did. And I always admired her for that. And she never came back on my show. So I don't know. There you go. <laughs> well, you know, in the history of the San Francisco comedy competition, which started in 76, only there's only one woman that ever won it. Who was it? Uh, Marsha Warfield. Oh, Marsha Warfield, yes. And that was early on, wasn't it? She won it in 79. She won the third, fourth one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Marsha Warfield. Whatever happened to Marsha Warfield? She wound up on uh, Night Court. She was on Court. Night Court. Yeah. She played the bailiff or something like that. Yeah, and she was, I never met her, but I heard she was very funny. And uh, the story I heard about her was, remember when comics were doing those shows like Even at the Improv and, and uh, they told her before she went on, oh, do eight minutes, and we'll, we edit it down to five. So she went up and did five minutes and walked off and said, edit that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good so for you got to love that attitude. Yeah, no, that attitude is what made show business great. You know? <laughs> uh, but I, I'm trying to think, uh, any other female comics that really, I mean, Joan Rivers, uh, I think was terrific. And uh, such a, yeah, an incredible work ethic. Uh, she wrote jokes every day. And worked hard, and Jesus. Worked hard. She, you know, she got, she fought for everything she got. She did. She had that falling, that horrible falling out with Carson. Well, part of the problem was is she went to take the job at Fox doing a night show opposite Carson. And it wasn't that Carson was mad at her for doing that. He was mad at her for doing it because she didn't call him and tell him. And, yeah, that may have been a mistake. Yeah, that she should have called him before anybody found out about it and said, listen, Johnny, I've got to take this thing. And Carson probably would have said, go ahead, take it. You know, I mean, it's a, it's a big job and you shouldn't turn it down. That's probably what he would have said. Mm -hmm. But instead, he was bothered by the fact that he put her in the position where she could get that job because he, he made her the permanent guest host on the tonight show and um she got that fox job as a result of that and she should have called him you know that right. would have been the right thing to do and i think in later years she said that she she felt guilty that she didn't oh really yeah okay. yeah that you know that she didn't want she the thing that hurt her most in her career personally was the falling out with johnny and I, uh, I kind of got caught in the middle. I was scared. I would have been on her last show. Oh, what? What? Tell yeah. me this. Tell me this story. I was, uh, I'd been, the Letterman people have been looking at me for a while, and then uh, they had an audition out here uh, for the Joan Rivers show. This was February of 87. And uh, I got, I got the show. Uh, Mark Breslin was booking it. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, he got the show, so we're, he called me up and went over my material, and then I called the Letterman people, and they said, hey, I know you guys are considering me, but I just got the Joan Rivers show, and they said, don't move. Let, we're going to call you back in a few minutes. And they were having this huge battle. Remember, NBC was, Carson was so mad, I think if you, if you did Rivers' show, they weren't going to have you on The Tonight Show ever again or something. Yeah, something, something like that. Yeah, I was uh, so uh, so the Letterman people called me back later that day. And they go, "Can you send us a tape ASAP?" So I went up to the Holy City Zoo, made a tape, FedEx it to them, and I get a call the next day. You've got the show, but don't do don't do Joan Rivers. Oh, so that's how you got the yeah. the Letterman show. That speeded it up, yeah. Mm -hmm. So how did you get it twenty years later? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I sent a t again. I sent a tape to the Letterman Eddie Brill at the uh, Letterman show, and uh, I made kind of a funny tape. I uh, I sent uh, my set, but be I pre prefaced that with David Letterman on the first show I'd done, and, and Letterman says, "Nice job, Larry. Please come back." And then I <laughs> then I put this little thing that said, "20 years later." <laughs> <laughs> And I uh, and he so Brill really liked the tape, and then they saw me live, and then I uh, finally got it again. You did a you did a you did a massively great job on that show. 
I mean, I still oh, thanks. I, I well, still gone pretty- back and looked at it because it's on YouTube, and uh, you know, you you worked well on those kind of shows because you work well in close up. You know, you have such a goofy looking face. I, please don't take that the wrong way. <laughs> You have such a goofy-looking face. That Ohio inbreeding, I think, probably. The Ohio inbreeding. What's his name said that? Uh, didn't uh, what's his name? The other comic you talked about last week, who referred to you as something. Oh God. Oh, Attell. Attell, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what he said that was a. Uh, <laughs> so it was a uh, dust dust bowl good looks. <laughs> <laughs> dust bowl good looks. Anyway, uh, y- you know, I mean, you just, I, I'm, I looked at you doing those things and said, it was terrific, you know. And your second set, 20 years later, was better than the first one. You could oh, s- by far, yeah. You could see that you had really learned your craft. Well, I'd be definitely more confident, yeah. So. You know, but uh, 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 the, only thing I, the only thing about that set that I remember, though, is you constantly going, yeah. Yeah, I did that little second show. Yeah, you did that a lot. I did that a lot, and I was going to, I didn't even ask them if I could do that, because I knew they'd say no, so I said, I'm going to do it. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, your, it's your Edward G. Robinson impression. Right, yeah. and uh, the thing about doing a Letterman show on, at CBS was that, uh, that Ed Sullivan Theater, you realize you've been on the stage that the Be- the Beatles are on and uh, Elvis Presley, so it's uh, it was a pretty amazing place to be. There's a history there. there. There's something in the bones of that theater. Yeah, that, you know, and plus the fact, as opposed to doing the original, which was on uh, the Late Show, uh, you were just in a small television studio. Very small, yeah. This thing, you're in a place where you are used to being. On a stage, you know, so that made well, that was a great theater for a comic to perform in. Yeah, it really was. You know, and and um, um, yeah, I mean, a lot of comics died there too. I remember one of our friends who was on Letterman and completely died, and that was Will Durst. Yeah, he had a rough set on the. Oh, that was it the, was, and, and he he was. I the, as I watched it, I said. Will, you're better than this. But apparently he listened to the producer about what material he should do and not do. And when you do that, you're you know, you're kinda giving up your ability to decide what your set's gonna be, you know? Um it's like you said, you didn't go nah when you auditioned for him. You saved that for air because yeah, you knew they would right. say, No, don't do that. Uh, and, you know, although some of the producers who were on the Letterman show were pretty good producers and pretty good at, at knowing what's funny and what's not funny, but nevertheless, uh, you know, it, 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 it was a, a real uh, problem for you to decide what to do and what not to do based on what the producer was telling you. Like the first time you, the first set you did, did they tell you, well, don't do that, do this, uh, you can't do that, you can't do this? Yeah, they did. Uh, yeah, I had, uh, I had a joke about a clown at a kid's birthday party blowing his brains out. They go, oh, you can't do that. And Why? Uh, it was too graphic, I think. Uh, I remember it was Barry Sands, the producer at the time. So I was in his office and he. I guess he they had a they had a printout of what I was going to do, and he goes, "I don't like the thing about the clown blowing his brains out." <laughs> you know what? You know what I what happened was early on, who came to town, scoping out talent for Letterman. I'm trying to remember who it was. I think uh, Bob Morton. It was Bob Morton. Yeah. Uh, and I was out at uh, I think Tommy T's with him. I was taking him around to see the comics. He did, uh, I can tell you this was, uh, that would have been May 11th, uh, 85, because I did, they did it at Cobbs on Friday of May 10th, which uh, that's where I did my audition. Then the next night they did Tommy T's in San Leandro. See, ladies and gentlemen, this is Rain Man. What date was that again? May 10th and 11th, 1985. Oh, God. Well, anyway, I was taking Morty around, uh, and, uh, 
to these various clubs to see the comics. And uh, at one point he said, I think it was, I can't remember who it was, maybe it was Bob Rubin or somebody that I really liked. And I said, well, what did you think? He said, I love him. He said, he's incredible, but I can't put him on. And I said, why? He says, I'm here deciding what Dave's going to want, not what I want. And so right. most of his decisions were made on what he believed that, you know, Dave would like. And he also sometimes would feel threatened by certain comics. He hated having, from what I was told, he hated having um, Robin Williams on the show. Really? Because huh. he considered him uncontrollable. But he felt, Oh, I could see that, yeah. <laughs> but he felt it a necessity to have him on because he was so popular. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, when when Morty said to me, I'm I'm deciding what Dave would want, not what I would want. I began to understand what was going on. And I guess you were you were perfect. Did you get your audition? Did you get your Letterman show off of that? Yeah. And uh, it took a while because I went I went back to New York and I had one more audition to get the Letterman show and then that one went bad and then I they said, Well, we gotta look at you again and yeah. then that Joan Rivers thing came up and that kind of expedited it. Yeah. All of a sudden they wanted you. Yeah. yeah. They wanted to get you in case you got famous. They wanted to have you on so they said we had them first, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. That's uh, that's that's I didn't know that story. About that. Yeah, and it turned out uh, I had a girlfriend at the time who was uh, so excited because Joan Rivers' last show they would have had me and Duran Duran, and she was like have it going out of her mind. And... But it didn't happen. So. But it didn't happen. You had a girlfriend at the time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. And so what happened twenty years later when you got your next girlfriend? Yeah. You... <laughs> I know. By then I was done with the girls. So. You were done with them. Yes. What made we should talk about this next time? What made you get fed up on women? <laughs> yeah, we can talk about that. But, uh. Yeah, because you know you're one of these people. I'll tell you, there's certain people, and we can talk about this next time too. I often mention to my my wife about my friend Shaggy that in all the years I knew him, there were things I didn't know about him, and I don't know what those things were. You know. Because uh, he never revealed himself much uh, as to who he was or what he was thinking, you know. I mean, I knew what his politics were and things like that, but I, I never, I, I, I knew him, but I didn't feel I knew him 100%, you know. And I, I asked Mar Marjorie uh, last night, do you feel you know everything about me? And she says, no, I don't. I said, we should sit down some night. You should ask me any question you want to ask me, and I should ask you any question I want to ask you, and we should know more about each other. But I think people who are close spend their entire lives not really revealing themselves to the other person. Would you agree with that? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, there's some people are married to serial killers and never know it. So. It, 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 it. Gee, he was treated the kids so well. Yeah. You know, I never would have believed he was a child molester. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Did you hear this great story? I heard the, this story. It was, uh, it was on um, Bill Maher last week. One of his guests told the story about in Scotland, or in Ireland, rather, a guy was arrested for raping two women. And when he went to court, he revealed that he suddenly had decided to trans to a woman. So he wanted to be referred to as, oh, and he gave a woman's name or whatever. So when he was finally found guilty, they sent him to a women's prison. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and that was his sentence, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> For well, rape. His case, I guess it was a reward. I don't know. It, it, well, I mean, what a smart idea on his part, right? <laughs> you know. So, that's playing the legal system. Yeah, it's playing the legal system for all it's worth. So, uh, so are you playing anywhere where people can see you? I am with uh, Rob Schneider this week. Yeah. Oh, oh, really? Say hello to Rob for me. We'll do. Yeah. Uh, tell him I'd love to have him on the show again. Yeah. Oh well, he'd probably do it. Yeah, because I like I like Rob a lot. 
you know, a lot of people have, whenever they did jokes about him on Family Guy, I was upset, okay? You know, but he seemed to be the butt of a lot of jokes, so. Yeah. What the hell? Anyway, listen, uh, let's uh, let's do this again next week. We, we shall. And uh, in the meantime, if you have any other dates you want to remember, let me know. <laughs> Ladies and May gentlemen, 10th, 85. <laughs> it's our version of Rain Man. His name is Larry <laughs> Bubbles Brown. Bye, Larry. Bye, Alex. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And, oh, hey, let me turn on, oops, let me turn this on here. Hold on a second. The lights, I, I pressed the wrong button. Oh, what do you know? All of a sudden, my lights decide not to work. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Isn't that terrible? I, uh, I just, uh, I just, uh, hold on a second. I'm going to go to Wi-Fi here. It may change the signal for a time being, but I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. I, I was having this problem earlier tonight, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, we just had, uh, you know, uh, problems here. So I don't know what it is. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I don't know. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. So let me see here. Wi Fi. A bolo ben mill mills. Okay. That should be uh we should be doing okay. We should be all right, but we aren't. So let me get out of this here. A second and uh, we will just uh, we will just assume that um, I don't uh, have any lights here tonight what happens is these lights are on a uh, on uh, Wi-Fi uh, I'll never buy another pair of these again these are Elgato's but what happens is if something goes a little wacky with your your Wi-Fi uh, it uh, it just uh, it just goes out you know and it could be that later on during the hour, all of a sudden, they will suddenly decide to work. But I don't have anything here to, you know, to push it with uh, here. So I don't, I have no idea. I have no idea. Anyway, I could, uh, let me see here. Let me do this. Show webcam panels. Let me see here if I want to try this. This will brighten me up? No, it was supposed to brighten me up. Oh, boy. I don't get it. Anyway. Eh, well, what the hell. I'll sit here in the dark while I talk to people. <laughs> I, I hate this. I'm, I'm getting to the point where this is just getting to be ridiculous, okay? Um, I may have everybody just talk to each other, and I will set up the lights and get them going again. I don't get it at all. I really don't. Uh, anyway, uh, let me admit all here, all these people, okay? Here they come. There's Charlene. Hello, hi. Charlene. Uh, uh, hi I'm to talking. Kevin. Oh, hi sorry. to Josh. Hi. Hello hi. to Ch uh, Charlie <laughs> Wallace, and hello to Vernon Nunn. And um, uh, I, what I want is uh, you guys should probably talk to each other, okay? Uh, okay. Yeah, and I will try and fix these lights. <laughs> this is This is absurd. It is just absurd. And plus, I'm then going to, things may go out for a second for some of you people, but I'm going to. Is this working for you? I got my little flashlight on above you. <laughs> that, that, that about does it. No, I'm, 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 I'm really thinking of getting rid of this. Uh, um, uh, you, you are going to get another Elgato or you're not? No, I'm nah. not. I, I get some other lights that aren't Elgatos and that I can, uh, I don't have to uh, use the. Uh, what do you call it? The uh, Wi-Fi. See, I mean, it, it, it hooks up to the Wi-Fi. So wait yeah. a minute. Hold on. Just start talking to each other. How are you all tonight? I'll talk to you. Oh, and I I'll... think Alex looks good in that light. I have him on my TV, and I... he looks good. Yeah. It's a nice view. See any flaws. Flattering. Yeah. Here, I just, uh... oh, now this won't, even, this won't even reboot. Oh, there we go. There we are. And then you see that, then then it'll start flashing. It should start flashing. Okay. The lights. Uh -huh. Okay. Come on. You're not even in go. a storm like Charlie. You clear today, Charlie? And then yeah, then finally quit that. raining. We're all underwater here. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. 
And, uh, That's terrible. Now, Sorry, Charlie. There we go. Let me see here. I got to find something here to work. Oh well, the, well, you see that light is up on me yep. here. Got one one set on. Yeah, but that's it. That, that that's all I've got. And now wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me bring this down here. There we go. Then I do this, and I tell it to uh, uh, do this to uh, huh hmm hmm. Well, it's not doing anything. Let me see here. Jeff, Jeff was nice enough to turn another light on for you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I want to do this, and then I'm going to do that. There. No, I don't want oh. that. No. Oh. No, that's not what I want. Oh God, this is just this is absurd. Uh, let me see here. Let me put on that. That is the uh, the the thing I want. Okay. There we go. And then, okay. Now I do that. I go cancel. I don't want to run diagnostics. I want to. Uh, uh, oh God! This is this is this is absurd and ridiculous. There we go. All right. So that should then uh, do, turn that light on. I hopefully. Uh, anyway, how you guys doing? Good to see you. Huh? Doing okay. Yeah, you doing okay? Uh, yeah. I you know I was having trouble with this tonight. I don't want that. It keeps going to the wrong one. Oh God, this is this is. You see, this is why I'm getting rid of these. I've had these for the longest time, and they keep giving me these problems, uh, and I don't need them. To be honest with you. So there we go. We're that, only seeing uh, your face on YouTube. Huh? Oh, I see. Okay. Just seeing okay. You. Uh -oh. Well, let me just uh, move over to. Let me do because I was all with all these problems. There we go. There's everybody. See, there's a whole bunch of them. And now I will do that. And it should be gathering information about my network. And now it says it wants to go on to this other Wi-Fi that I've got. And I don't want it to go on to that Wi-Fi. Oh, boy. This is, this is absurd. I'm just so sick of this. You know? Run diagnostics. Okay, I'll run diagnostics. Let me do that. <laughs> Let me do that for a while. Then it starts running diagnostics, and then something happens. And I don't, now, now I've got the other light if I want it. Okay, <laughs> here we go. There's the yeah, other there light. You there you go. Yeah, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm stop. Want to stop this? Okay, and then I want to. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, am I on here? Now let me uh, just say there. I want that. Okay, here we go. We want the Bolo Mills. It's you know this is just the worst um, idea for a lighting system that I've ever come up with because it 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 just goes out on me, you know, mm. which uh, b bothers me. Uh, come on, come on. Hmm. No, I don't want that. That's not what I want. Okay, let me get rid of that. Let me get rid of that and you look me, good what you yeah. look good. yeah but one of these lights is too bright okay so anyway um how are you all doing uh everybody say hello well, charlie's rain has moved up to kentucky finally what oh i did huh oh the charlie's rain? rain has moved up to kentucky oh charlie's rain <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> that storm yeah uh yeah, i think we're getting it in jersey tomorrow or something the rain yeah. And I hope you don't get the lightning and tornado that we got. We get that now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, oh, I keep saying I'm not, uh, you know, Dorothy. <laughs> I don't want to go up, you know, in a tornado. It's yeah. not Kansas anymore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the country isn't Kansas anymore. It's crazy. But weather, the weather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, how's the weather where you are up there, uh, Jeff? Well... Kind of cold a little bit today, but it's not raining. Yeah, yeah. We just, it's just been very nice down here. It was very sunny. We took a walk and yeah, it was a nice sunny walk. It was some nice day. It was a nice day today. Yeah. 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 This morning. Yeah. And over where you are, Kevin, how's the weather there? Uh, it's getting close to 80 again. Oh, really? 
70 something today. Yep. Yeah. Same wow. thing here. Okay. Setup is complete, and now I can. Oh boy, I hope I can. And that's the, the end of the show, folks. We're going to have to <laughs> say goodbye. <laughs> there We're we all go. the same. There we go, folks. <laughs> There's our, uh, there's our, uh, and there's the music. Mm -hmm. And I guess I'll keep this thing on Wi Fi. I guess everybody, nobody's <laughs> dropping frames. Everybody's getting a picture out there, right, folks? Let me just turn this yeah. on here just to make yeah. sure. There's uh, a picture. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to make sure that it's, you know, that it's, uh, that I'm going to, I'm going to do the show off the Wi Fi tonight so I don't turn the, because it might screw up the, the lighting. <laughs> you know, this is just, you know, see, I have a thing. See, I mean, I, but it's on Wi-Fi, and I can turn them on or off, you know, with one button. And it's a, it would be really nice if it didn't always go out on me. And there's nothing wrong with my Wi-Fi because it's right in, here. It's in this room. I should be radiating from the Wi-Fi, you know. So. <laughs> but, you know, and it never does it. It never does it at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. It does it at, uh, you know, as soon as, well, actually it was doing it tonight and I fixed it and then I went and I turned it on and turned it off and made sure it was working and I came on the air and for the first half hour with bubbles on, I, I, st I had it and all of that and all of a sudden, boom, goes off. People do not buy Elgato lights, if not that <laughs> any of you have ever asked anyway. I think, I think <laughs> Phil bought three of them. Yeah, he bought three say, of them. You only need two of them, but Phil bought three. He Back wanted up. to illuminate his bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> he says he wanted to illuminate his green screen. Oh. Which, by the way, I'm doing with two lights. <laughs> and there's nothing yeah. wrong with this key. A lot of people would think I was in that room, you know. But, you know, I'm, it's the kind of thing I'm sick of because I wish I had a crew. Right, and if it went bad, they take care of it. I just do the show, get my get my lights on, okay? But I don't. I have to do everything, and it it it's it. After a while, it gets to you, you know, because it, it, no matter what anybody wants to say, none of this stuff is perfect. So do not buy Elgato, okay? <laughs> this is an Elgato screen. I mean, I paid a, a lot of giving them a lot of money. Uh, this is a. Uh, uh, El, Elgato lights. What else do I have that's Elgato? There's one other thing I've got that's an Elgato product. Oh, Elgato Go. That was it. Elgato Go. Yeah, <laughs> Elgato Go. Isn't yeah. Elgato Spanish for the cat? Or yes, something? yes. Yeah. But I mean, Elgato. you know, I'm sick and tired of it. The lights keep going out, you know. And uh, uh, I have a, a Wi Fi I could put them on over here. Uh, but I have to turn the Wi-Fi off in order to make this work. It's very strange. It, it, I don't even want to talk about it. Does it going. go off and on? Huh? And on? Does it go on and off? What? <laughs> the, the light. They, it's not they don't go, they go on and off. They go off. No. You know, all of a sudden they lose their Wi-Fi. <clears throat> and uh, everything else is working on the Wi-Fi. Let me just make sure here. Um, You're uh, going out. Echo. On YouTube. Turn off office. Oh, the lights didn't go out. Nope. Echo, turn off office. Office isn't responding. Office isn't Please responding. Network connection oh boy. Supply. Yeah. Okay. Screw you. Okay. Everybody. Screw you. <laughs> I'm tired of this. Oh, and what do you know? I think yeah, I don't have my uh my Wi Fi anymore here. Uh, the lights will now not go off. So if I try to turn them off, they don't go off. Can't go to sleep. Oh, this is you know this, this is ridiculous. It is just so ridiculous. I can't stand it. You know. So, what the hell? Uh, I just uh, you know. Well, I'll I'll just let you guys continue the show. I'm I have no lights here to work. I, none of my stuff works now. I can't turn off anything. See, the lights are working fine. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, working now. Yeah, it's working. Oh, yeah, good. but now I can't turn them off. Oh, well, that's okay. You don't that's want to turn them off. <laughs> well, I don't want to turn them off, but, you know. But uh, let me see here. Echo, turn on lamp. Okay. 
The other rooms are working. This room isn't working. Some the light reason. in the bathroom just came on. Huh? <laughs> the light in the bathroom just came on. Yeah, right. Oh, here's, here's Brian. Let me add Brian to the mix. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, listen, it was something for Josh. Josh, did you see that uh, they were, uh, uh, they want, what's his name, to testify before Congress? Clarence Thomas? Uh, no, I must have missed that last couple minutes or whatever. I was working on something. No, I, I don't. Does he have the right to refuse? Uh, if he's subpoenaed, I would say uh, no. Um, I don't. He shouldn't have any sort of immunity from that. Yeah. I thought it was uh, Roberts. I thought it was Roberts. They wanted to come and talk to him at the Senate Judiciary Committee. Yeah, maybe they want him too, but they want Clarence Thomas to to testify okay. in front of the Judiciary Committee. Um, I, you know, I don't know why because who who's the head of the Judiciary? Isn't that uh, uh, Jim Jordan? No, it's Dick Durbin. Dick Durbin. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's an academic so, yeah. Okay. All right. Because, you know, I, I wonder about these things, you know. I can't... Uh, they just want to talk about ethics. They want to talk about ethics? Yeah. Uh, do they know anything about ethics? No. Yeah. Um, but, but this whole thing with Clarence Thomas, I mean, come on. You know, I mean, how far do you want to go to, you know, I mean, is, is anything he did, Josh, considered to be illegal? It is, you say, I don't, Kevin? I don't, I don't know the answer to that, honestly. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I think some well, of it might be creeping that way. I, I, I honestly would say no, it's probably not. I mean, well, unless he, unless he did something, you know, that, garnered him some sort of income or something he didn't disclaim you know there could be some tax yeah. consequences there and you know that's ignorance what the, that's what i thought the property thing was the, the illegal one mm -hmm. yeah, yeah i mean you know happened. some of that's possible i mean but you know, it wasn't the sale vacation. of the property that was illegal it was the fact that he didn't disclose it because it was over a thousand yeah that was illegal right correct he's required to disclose it yeah some of that might be in that in that realm i mean i don't know all their particular rules and you know regulations they have to to go by so i mean if there are people that are you know tapped into that that say that it is and it very well is possible that it was uh you know and then you gotta you know go down the path they gotta prove certain things you know about mm -hmm. it so i don't know how easy it is whatever, but um you know they certainly have the ethics you know, deal. There's obviously no doubt about that. I mean, I'm certainly disappointed that, uh, you know, some of the stuff that he did is, you know, a little ridiculous. So, I mean, I, I, I don't have any problem with that at all. I mean, he should have to come testify. He should have to explain himself personally. They should be the first step in uh, their investigation. Should be the first step in whatever path the Senate Judiciary, you know, wants to take. I mean, look, the Supreme Court is you know, an equal branch of government, but there's no doubt that Congress was set up with the power of oversight of that court. Um, you know, they were allowed to, they're allowed to create courts and they're allowed to, mm -hmm. you know, adjust courts and things like that. So they, they have clear oversight, they have power and, you know, they're well within their rights to use it and they should because there is probably something there. I mean, you know, we're going to treat it just like anything else, right? He's been accused of something. Mm -hmm. We're not just going to, you know, he's accused on, you know, Monday at noon and by, you know, after lunch, we should impeach him. Now we got to look into it, right? I mean, that's the way it works here. And that's the way it should work here, especially when you start talking about someone losing a job. I mean, a job is a job, right? You wouldn't want to get fired from your job just because you got accused of something you'd want. Right. A fair hearing, right? So he, he, he can have that. But it look, to me, it looks, you know fishy <laughs> yeah best right you know so i i think that i think they're probably going to look into it and they should i mean i i don't know i didn't see the story about anyone testifying yet uh, like i said i was working mm -hmm. on some stuff here the last few hours and i read an article about the abortion case and uh you know maybe that other maybe that headline is up there and i missed it but they sh they should have him testify and um you know maybe the chief justice i don't 
think the Chief Justice did anything wrong. But, uh, you know, I think he would testify if he's called. When it comes to the abortion pill situation, what did they exactly rule today? Was it just that for the time, for the time being, yeah. they allow it to go back what, to the Fifth District Court or something like that? Yeah, they're they're going to send it, you know, I think back for a few things. And I mean, the, the main thing today was just that they've agreed to basically extend the stay, you know, so things can go on as they were mm -hmm. uh, until the issue is resolved, pretty much. So they just extended they just extended their stay, making this available to people that need it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it'll go back and get reviewed. I mean, I think, you know, obviously whatever happens will get appealed. I can't see any reason, you know, neither side is going to let it go, um, you know, which is fine. It, could the so it'll 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 yeah. circle its way back. Could the know, abortion pill be considered a different situation than general abortions that were outlawed? By well, the I, Supreme I, Court? I think it it is and I think it will, because this isn't necessarily the way that it's been framed isn't necessarily uh, addressing abortions. Um anti-abortion people are using this as a back door because that's what they're trying to do to stop abortions any way they can but it's not framed as whether or not it's about abortion mm -hmm. uh which the court never said no one in america had a right to they just said you know it was up to different states yeah but it's framed as a question about whether or not a government agency had the power to take an action that they took you know more or less mm -hmm. and you know i I think that by statute, the FDA, you know, probably did have that power, probably, you know, and does. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a couple of the justices that might have been in one way on the, uh, the Dobbs case, for example, that doesn't really, to me, indicate, you know, their thinking in this case, because their thinking in this case is really not so much about abortion as it is about the power of one agency to do something and a couple of the more conservative justices you know like coney barrett or whatever they're they're pretty clued into what agencies have what power and you know a separation of powers and they, and they kind of you know they like to stick to that kind of stuff um and, you know look for as liberal as i can be with some of my politics or whatever I'm pretty much that way, too, with some of these questions. You know, if an agency doesn't have a power to do something, even if it is a good thing, they don't have the power, they don't have the power. Yeah, they but, but, they, but they, 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 they exercised the power, what, 40 years ago or 30 years ago? I think it was 20. It was like 2003, I yeah. think I heard, 2002, 2003. Yeah. And, and so, um, and, a, a very long time. Yeah. So, I mean, it can't, you know, shouldn't that just stand because as, lo as long as it's been there? You know, well, Plus, that's what, what that, part of what the they're, counter. What they're claiming is the reason they want the bill, the pill banned, is because it is dangerous for women. Right. And yet, point mm -hmm. zero one percent yeah. of people have had negative consequences as a result of taking yeah. that pill. That My is lower. Is Ten times more dangerous. Ibuprofen has yeah. more dangerous results than that pill. Yep. So, yeah. you know, uh, th that argument should be, you know, that's that shouldn't be allowed as an argument at all. Right. Yeah. And it. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of the counter arguments from the government. Mm -hmm. um, it's legitimate. You know, it's probably going to hold up, you know, in a lot of ways. I mean, it was a long time ago. Um, I do think they had the power. Mm -hmm. A lot of time has passed. And, you know, and another one of the arguments that you'll hear a lot about is a, you'll hear this and you always hear this at the court a lot. You're going to hear a lot about standing, which is the people that are actually bringing the suit, you know, don't really have the right to because they're not really a party to any sort of in injury to be able to sue. It's yeah. just a group of people who don't like it. In other words, there should be an you injury know? first. And then if they did yeah. this, they'd have more yeah. of an argument. I mean, the, the people that are that are bringing this argument are literally bringing it to the courts only simply because they don't like it. Mm -hmm. You know, they haven't been involved in a case where they were given something or denied something or, you know, generic standing for whatever. Yeah. Charlene I mean, had her hand yeah. up, and since she's the only woman here tonight, I think we should hear from a woman on this subject. Yeah. 
Okay, I hope it's uh, eloquent enough or whatever. Um, but anyway, um, I heard about this on the news, mm-hmm. and uh, you're you know doing a good job of uh, explaining it all like in depth to me now. But is this like a morning after pill, Alex? Or no, this what, isn't a morning. This isn't abortion. this isn't a morning after pill. Um, it's like an early abortion. Which you take, which you take the morning after when you think you might have been inseminated, so you take it to prevent insemination. Uh, this mm-hmm. pill is an after morning pill where like, you know oh, well, you know you're preg- you know you're pregnant and now you want to terminate the pregnancy. Right. But how far along does it do it? You know, that like, I, that I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Oh, right? sorry. Like 15 that, weeks or something. You the, can't take it past right. Yeah, well, how many weeks did somebody say 15? 15? 15 is what I remember it being. Yeah, I think that the the actual the actual issue that restirred the case was that the drug was approved 20 years ago, but about three or four years ago, the FDA removed the cap that said you could only use it up to 12 weeks. No. And they extended it to 15 weeks mm-hmm. because the studies that have been done in the first 17 years showed data that said it was safe for that extra period. Oh, okay. You know, and that extension obviously rubbed, you know, anti-abortion people the wrong way. And then in the post-Dobbs era... Mm-hmm. They're just trying to strike why their anti-abortion iron is hot, right? I mean, (laughs) you know, that's pretty much it. But in many ways, this is like me going to a court and inserting myself because I didn't like the ruling that came down in your uh, rent case, right? Mm -hmm. I have nothing to, you know know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, I have, you know, if I tried to do that, a court would tell me, you have no standing there, right? I mean, you are you Alex Bennett? Are you the guy Alex Bennett sued? I mean, no? Well, then, you know, get the hell out of my office. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, I mean, you know, it's kind of, I mean, that's a really stupid thing. Well, example, I mean, to begin like with, that. to begin with, so many people today are anti-science, you know, and they just, they just do right. things like this without any scientific backing on it. I mean, in this particular case here, here they're claiming they claim the reason they were they made the pill uh, illegal. Uh, this judge in Texas was because of the imminent danger to women. Yeah, and I'm right. telling you, there is no danger to women. Uh, I would tell those same women, don't use <laughs> ibuprofen if you're worried about having a risk from a pill. Uh, yeah, you know, and yet none of that was taken into consideration by this judge. He had a yeah. ax to grind, and he was going to grind it real sharp. You mm-hmm. know. Then you had another judge who had another ax to grind, and he decided to say, no, it's still legal. And then that went to the Supreme Court, and they said, God, we don't want to handle this again. God, this is like, you know, plus we got Clarence Thomas over here with problems. We don't want people mad at us, you know. I mean... It, 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 I'm, I'm sure they could live without it, but I mean, they're gonna have to. It's not permanent, uh, is know, it? Eventually, it goes back down to the lower courts. You know something? I think they should be allowed to. Uh, they should be allowed to vote on at the Supreme Court on uh, abortion, okay, on Roe versus Wade and whatever, but yeah. only the ma- female judges can, <laughs> not the male judges, because they should yeah. have no say so in the matter. You know, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, I just, you know, I, I just find it uh, appalling that this is even a question now. I mean, this is, how long mm-hmm. has Roe versus Wade been around? 40 years? 49 yeah. years. 49 yeah, years. Yeah, it was 73, January 20th, 1973. You know, I got to tell you, I, it, it's a little late to backtrack. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because now that you're backtracking, you're getting a reaction that's horrible. The only good thing about this is, this is a real issue that's going to kill it for the Republicans in 2024. Mm-hmm. Because there's kill enough, a lot of women too, huh? Yeah. 
You're going to kill a lot of women, too. Well, that's the negative part about it. Although, hopefully, those women can go to other states like California and get an abortion. Uh, some, uh, some of these states, I think, are kind of allowing people to come to their states and almost helping them uh, financially to do so. Uh, I, I just think it's, it's a terrible thing that women have had this option for the last, as you say, what, 49 years? 50 years. Almost 50 and years. Now it's 50, but yeah, that was yeah. 49 when they yeah. rescinded it. Uh, and that they've had this right all this time, and now all of a sudden it doesn't exist any longer. I mean, that's kind of like saying you have the right to vote, women, but, oh, we just decided that uh, the women's right to vote was wrong, and now women can't vote. They'd never think of doing that. Yep. Never think of doing that. They voted, they, they, yeah, then they shouldn't. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it, it just, yeah. you know. It, I mean, hopefully. It's, hmm? it's mostly younger women. Well, younger women are being affected by it. I mean, Marjorie right now is not looking for an abortion, okay? You know. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, yes, Charlene. And, and poor so, women. you know, I totally agree with you, Alex. I mean, like, didn't they realize that, like, it, it's going to kill women because if they can't get a safe abortion fast and they, what if they don't want to leave the state or something like that? I mean, it could eventually, I mean, it's over dramatic, but send people back to coat hangers or something like that, you know, where, mm. I mean, that was the. Uh, Margaret Sanger, I mean, and the right to vote, you know, like you tied it together. I mean, you know, womankind is going to go backwards like four decades if they keep this up. It's yeah. terrible. What's well, I mean, what you're going to have is you're going to have women uh, taking abortion into their own hands. As it yeah. Were. Coat hangers is, is, in, is, is it goes back to the way it used to be years ago. Uh, I, do we have coat hangers anymore? No, they're usually those wooden ones now or those plastic <laughs> ones. Oh, the, those problem, ones. Yeah. the problem is if you go into a state like Texas or, or uh, Florida, if women take matters into their own hands, they can be criminally prosecuted. Oh, right, right. For yeah. murder, like, or something, right? Well, the, the, yeah, those laws have not been tested. Okay. So, we're, so what we're doing is we're taking somebody without a criminal history. And we're making and because a... they want to get an abortion, it turns them into a into a felon i mean something's wrong with this picture well hell i was smoking pot for years and if i was caught i would have become a felon in california you know i mean we're smoking it, yeah, uh, we, it that's not the first time we've had laws that make you a criminal when you're not really a criminal in the criminal class let's say mm -hmm. right that's right uh, but i mean what's horrible i mean you take a place like uh florida uh with uh, uh governor DeSantos. That's what I like to call him. Meatball uh, Ron. Huh? Meatball Ron. Meatball Ron. Meatball Ron. I Ron it. DeSantos. Okay. Just call him that for a while. But anyway, the point I'm making is is the stuff he's doing down there with all this, uh, you know, the, the don't say gay, you know. Hey, by mm -hmm. the way, if everybody, if, you have, if any of you are out there who are listening to me right now from Florida, turn <laughs> your computers up real loud, Okay. <laughs> Gay. Okay, thank you very much. I just wanted to say that. I mean, what? What? Don't say gay. I mean, you know, what? What? We? You're not. You can't teach that in schools. And what the hell are schools for? Mm -hmm. You know. Oh, but that's indoctrination, telling them that gay people exist. No, it's not. No, it's they not. Allow gay, they allow gay bars to still exist in Florida. Do they? I mean, Pulse nightclub, where there was a big shooting. It was in Florida. Yeah, but that, it? it's only a matter of time where they try to make those illegal. Yeah, they took. They're, they're trying to take Disney away. So why not go after the gay bars? Well, Dis Disney's taking them on, and you don't fight with Mickey Mouse, okay? No, no, no. <laughs> you know, they got a lot of money. Mickey a lot Mouse of power. is a t is a tough mother. You know. What I, what I find what I find strange, and I'm no I, I'm no expert on the legal system or constitutional law like Josh, but. I, I find it strange that nobody seems to be bringing up with any strenuous force the standing in this case. These guys had no standing whatsoever. So the first thing the appeals court should have said is, get the fuck out of here. You have no standing. The appeals court? Just on the abortion thing? Yeah. That Texas judge ruled 
and it went to the appeals court. Okay. Well, the Texas judge rule was ruling was wrong because the people who brought the case had no standing. Why did they have no standing? Because they were not injured. Oh, they were not injured. Okay. Well, then what? Were, how, who, who? Again, you know, I, I don't know the ins and outs of this case, but when they you say they had no standing, in other words, they went to a judge and asked for a determination on something where they had no. Uh, uh, yeah fight in the matter? Just based, just exactly. based on their yeah. own opinions. Pretty much. But you can't do that, can you? I mean, you've got to, you got to go in there and say, you know, my you wife, my wife, my it. wife took the abortion pill and it almost killed her. And I wanted you to make it illegal for women to get these things. Right. Then that would, I mean, you can, you can get almost anything if a judge will agree to it. But I mean, that very well may be the reason that the Supreme court, you know, looks at it. You know, it just hasn't gotten to that yet because the court is not yet at that stage. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, right now they've only been asked to agree to a, a stay while it, you know, is in its legal uh, argument. You know, yeah, the circus is going to go yeah. on with it. But but yeah. he's, you know, correct that 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 is a major portion of the counter argument. So I'm sure. That when the time comes, you will hear that argument made and probably made pretty well. I mean, you're not really going to hear it made back to that same judge because he obviously, you know, doesn't care. But it's going to go to, you know, different panels and other things and, and such. And it's going to make its way back. Where, where, at, where, at, where, is, where Because is, no matter what yeah. side wins, the other side's appealing. Well, this it's was, going to go this back. was sent back to the 5th District. Where is the 5th District? Uh, I don't Southwest. remember exactly where it covers. Southwest, Florida, I mean, uh, yeah. Texas, New Mexico, Oklahoma. Uh, well, lots of luck to us then. But, yeah. you know, it, it'll just get kicked around. I mean, it, 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 it really, in a way, it doesn't, to me, I guess, it doesn't matter much what it goes back and what the ruling is. Because no matter what, Neither side is going to drop it, right? Okay, but what's going to I mean, be if our side won tomorrow, the other side isn't going to drop it. And if they win tomorrow, we're not, right? I mean, I'm saying so it's... Well, Republicans in, in, in uh, the last election, who in their area were, you know, pro-life, and for Roe versus Wade being obliterated, uh, mm -hmm. didn't win their districts. You know, yeah, it wasn't a it wasn't a big winner for them. I mean, it's a bad issue you know, for them to be in a. Um, you know what they're also in a way. On the, you know what they're also on the wrong side of, and this is what gets me about the Republicans. Since when have the Republicans been pro-Russian? Mm -hmm. You know, Since because Trump what they've done, in. huh? Since Trump came, you know, in. I mean, the, the thing <laughs> is that they want to do away in the budget with helping Ukraine, sending weapons and material um, and money to Ukraine. And uh, uh, they're so, uh, they so want that, that what it really comes out to is being pro-Russia, you know? Pro-Putin. Pro-Putin. Now, when did the Republicans start, suddenly side with, uh, you know, the, the Russians? I mean, Donald weren't they Trump. always against the Russians? Always. They always claimed that our side were like, you know, pseudo communists, you know, and whatever. I mean, what happened here? Don't they know that they're they're again on the wrong side of the issue? Well, they're hiding behind the fact that they're being conservative. And I want to know, you know, but that's I, not conservative. I, I understand that this is a shall we say a small factor in the Republican Party that's ru that's running the whole party. I mean, I don't think that if you took a, if you got all these guys into a room by themselves and asked most of the Republicans how they feel about what's going on, they veer towards the middle. You know, they wouldn't veer towards MAGA. But all the guys who are in power are pro MAGA. I mean, it's really mm -hmm. it's 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 ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. and it's all because of the money in politics. So, mm -hmm. it, well, that there is money in politics. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you have folks with, you know, mm -hmm. views of that issue with Russia and Ukraine that, 
you know, it's, I get tired of some of it. I mean, I, you know, Richard Haas is the president of the council on foreign relations and goes on morning Joe all the time. And he won't come out and say it, but he circles around, you know, and says things that I say to myself, he might as well just say he's for Putin. I mean, because he'll try to act like he's not, but you know, you made a comment the other day that, you know, he thinks the Ukrainians should be negotiating more strongly for peace and that they need to drop this idea that they're going to evacuate all the Russians from all Ukrainian land. That's just not going to happen and they should accept it. And he doesn't want to see Ukraine have to be destroyed in order to save itself. And I, look, I guess that's a legitimate point. But I was talking to Patrick about this the other day, and I'm I'm just telling you. If the Russians invaded here, would we accept that argument? No. Would would we say, well, it's gone on for a couple of years, and and they've only got three or four states, and we're just going to have to? I mean, I, I'm telling you right now, I will burn this motherfucker to the ground, from one end of it to the other, before I would give them a square inch. And yep. if that's the oh, we we just lost Josh. Uh -oh. Well, there he is. He's back again. Okay. You're, we lost you for a second there, Josh. I'm sorry to make a joke. It depends on what states they invade, you know. Let them have South know, Carolina, yeah. Florida, mm -hmm. Yo, Mexico used them. to own New Mexico and Texas, well, so I, they just said, that's my country now. We're going to take that. You think the Republicans would stand well, for that? I, you know something? I think Lincoln was wrong. Uh, I think Lincoln was wrong. I think he should have let them secede from the Union. <laughs> because if they had, we wouldn't have to put up with them now, okay? You know? And, and by the way, our left-wing states, by the way, have been supporting those right-wing states for years. We've been yeah. sending them money disproportionately to what we have to do with in Congress. It's, it's amazing how much money they get from left-wing states uh, shoring up their economies down there. Uh, it wouldn't can Kentucky come in that uh, in that uh, group? Well, K Kentucky was a border state, so yeah, it was kind of fifty fifty. Yeah, what, what did they do when it came to the? Uh, well, Josh would know this too. The Civil War, wh which side were they on? They were they were a border yeah. state, so yeah. they, they played defense. They, they played defense, even though yeah, Jefferson I mean, they, was a non-slave state. Even yeah, though they, Jefferson, Jefferson Davis was born in Kentucky. They oh, really? they supported the they supported the Union a little really more than they did the Confederacy, but a lot of that was also because at the beginning, uh, Grant when he was in the Western Theater was able to, to really take control of Kentucky early on before the Confederates could really get a foothold there and push them out, and they were just really never able to get back in. So. They 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 just he was they were just able to cut it off. This is very similar in Tennessee and very similar in Missouri, mm -hmm. uh, you know, where you still had pockets or sections of Confederate uh, resistance, um, but overall the states were never able to officially join the Confederacy, if for no other reason than the fact that there were enough Union troops in their territories that they just didn't have that power. How much of the Civil War was over slavery, and how much of it was just Lincoln wanting to commit uh, economic sanctions against the South? Um, I don't know that I'd term it that way. I mean, Lincoln's stance was just that you know secession was not wasn't legal, and it it, well, it, it, it you know but it why wasn't were, allowed. Why, but why were they seceding? Well, they, they were I mean, slavery. They well, may call them state yeah, right. rights yes. or whatever. But, it was but wasn't, the vice president of the Confederacy admitted that in a speech. Yeah, but wasn't slavery an economic issue? In other words, if you did well, away with the, slavery, you were for the Confederacy. It was you yes. were choking I mean, the Confederacy's the... Uh, uh, livelihood, as it were. Actually, yeah. the, civil, the Civil War came about because of an argument over the expansion of slavery into places like Missouri and Kansas and the Dakotas. Mm -hmm. They did not want, Lincoln did not want to let it expand into those areas. Mm -hmm. And the South was, was uh, concerned that if it, they were not able to expand in those areas, that it would strangle their economy. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Well, I mean, the you know the the fear was it always was, you know, with an expansion of states comes more representatives to Congress, right, to both branches. So, if you continue to add free states, then you will theoretically, and this is what would have happened, you would add legislators who were not for the continuation of slavery. So, at some point, you would have legislated it away. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, as you said, was an economic issue for yeah. Southerners, you know, for for Southern aristocracy. What do you I mean? Wait, you know, wait, they Brian found something interesting. What were you? What were you? You had a you had, you had a, no, I choked. Oh, you I almost choked? died on camera. Yeah, it's OK. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> the difference between choking and laughing is eventually you're dead from choking. <laughs> or maybe you're dead from laughing too because you go to people oh you're killing me you know so and i wonder what that but, was know, the, the confederacy you know their their theory and you know it's, it's fair enough was that <clears throat> without slavery they wouldn't be able to survive or maintain the livelihoods that you know that they had at the time and you know they were just never willing to give it up <laughs> You know, so, but you know what 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 ended them in the in the long run was that the longer the war went on, the more people realized uh, Confederate people was that they were fighting a war that basically was only going to enrich or to continue to enrich a very small few. You know, mm-hmm. you know, at the end of the at the near the end and at the end of the war. The high desertion rates of Confederate soldiers, you know, usually came with the idea of a you know rich man's war and a poor man's fight. You know, yeah. there were very few Confederate soldiers that owned slaves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, the people that owned slaves didn't really put a uniform on mm-hmm. and serve. Yeah, some did, mostly as officers, you know, higher ranking officers. Right. But your the vast majority of your foot soldiers, okay, your 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 infantry was regular people from Confederate states that had what I would call regular jobs. They were not plantation owners. They were blacksmiths or worked in a mill or, you know, owned farms. You know, I mean, you know, a lot of farmers. But when I say farmer, I mean ran their own small farm, mm-hmm. not a plantation farm of cotton. You know, right. they grew crop or whatever. So, you know, I mean, that's what it, like I said, that's what it evolved to. Was, uh, let me, you know, can I a ask rich you, man's a, war and a poor man's I, fight. Can I ask you a question? Oh, was, was General Hooker Union or Confederate? Um, I could have caught it. Serious? <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, there was a General <laughs> Hooker, yeah. and he, the name for prostitutes came from the fact that he would hire women <laughs> For his troops. I'm sure Brian's nodding yes, because that's a piece of history Brian has made himself abundantly aware of. I've heard you say that before, yeah. Yeah, no, but he, he that's did. That's a great one, Alex. <laughs> and I'm just thinking, if he was with the Union, good for our side. <laughs> you know, good for our side. Both Brian and Josh choked. The, same la- time. Uh, the other thing I want to bring up is that there's somebody out there that really, if he doesn't wind up suing somebody, I don't know. Who could? Uh, Alec Baldwin. Oh. Have you heard the latest on this deal? Mm-hmm. Alec Baldwin, they've dropped the charges against him at least temporarily because they have found <clears throat> that the gun that was used, the uh, the uh, trigger had been altered, that had been changed. And so it could have gone off without even pulling on it or even putting great pressure on it. Uh, so they decided, and this is after a year. This is after a year. And I think, I think, uh, I think Baldwin has a great case here against the state of what New Mexico. I think is where this happened, yes. because I mean, he just you know, I mean, he's had a whole year of probably not being able to get work, you know. And it's 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 amazing, and I I think he I think he should shoot uh, uh, sue the bejesus out of them. Yes, Charlie. General Joseph Hooker was a Union officer. Very good for our Commander side. Of the of the uh, troops of the Potomac. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, only <clears throat> only a northerner could think of hookers. So. Sorry, I think I actually I answered you, and I think I guess I was muted. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was Here. Union General though. Here. He lost Here. it. Here. He had the uh, he had the bungle at Chancellorsville. Um, yeah. So he got Robert replaced Lee beat him. right after that. Yeah, well, because his troops were too busy screwing. So, you know. It was, <laughs> it was Sounds like all the Union generals before yeah. him. But anyway, getting back to Baldwin, I just, when I, when I heard about this finally, I just felt, what a crime. You know, what a horrible, horrible crime this is. That it, they waited a year, and it was all because, <laughs> and here's a perfect case of a state deciding that they were going to go after somebody only because he was famous mm -hmm. yeah. and and to not supply the information that they had and they must have had it early on that this was a newer uh, 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 trigger or what what do you call it uh, you know whatever it made it more sensitive to go off and so when he did that interview with ABC and said I didn't really pull on that trigger Altered. Yeah, altered. Everybody said, oh, well, he's got to be, that's stupid. He's got to be lying. Nobody's going to believe that. And now they believe it. Because it, the, it, the, it, it shouldn't be hard to prove. You get somebody that knows something about guns and goes and pulls the trigger. And if it takes one pound, they can actually measure it. Yeah. If it takes one pound and it's supposed to take five pounds, then it was altered. Yeah. And and so I mean I feel I feel real bad for him, you know. I mean, yeah. the work he must have lost, the work he might have lost had this thing even gone to trial, and people can and that, now nobody's going to sit around and go, oh, it was Alec Baldwin's fault. There's just no way. Yeah. But yeah, why didn't they have a gun expert? They have the evidence. They put it in a bag, like I watch CSI. You know, they put it in the plastic bag. Why didn't they have a gun expert look at the gun? They did. If, if it was so, let's say it was a there's a wall there, and the the actor's here in front of the wall, and you're driving the car, and you're gonna slam on the brakes, right? Mm -hmm. And but the car had no brakes and killed the guy, right? Mm -hmm. So wouldn't the first thing to do would be to check the car, make sure yeah. the car. Well, was apparently, off apparently, I think they've known this for quite a while, but the pr former. Attorney General of the state or the district attorney, whoever was involved in, in prosecuting him, didn't want to do it because they wanted the publicity of going prosecuting Alec Baldwin. So, so does that make you want to see the movie when they're done? No, because I hear it's going to be a pretty crummy movie. But you know, no, the movie the movie wasn't even supposed to be shown in the United States. It was being made as a tax uh, write off. OK, yeah. and it was supposed to be just distributed in Europe for a little bit because it had Alex Baldwin's name on it. And that was it. Now, probably Netflix will pick it up in a second. Oh, you know? it'll yeah. be a Netflix original. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe they'll pause it right before the person. Gets and I'll shot. tell you, if they buy the rights to that film, they're getting more bang for their buck. Oh, oh, thank you very much. Bang for the yeah. be here all the way. Wouldn't the gun handler have to tell him that it's a hairline trigger too? The know. handler, the, the handler is actually handles all the weapons. Well, the handler is still armor. It, it, the armor is still armor, yeah. being. Well, why charged. do you have a bullet in the gun to begin with? Right. Yeah, the handler is supposed to know whether the gun's loaded or not. Well, they're supposed yeah. to. Uh, they're supposed to use blanks, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so how did a real that that's the second question. How did that real bullet get into that gun? It was used blanks and then they use use fake blood and they 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 trigger the fake blood to make it look like a wound. Yeah, well, but the point that I'm making is I think if you want my opinion and I always suspected this for a while that somebody was out to get Alec Baldwin. Mm -hmm. But this was a rehearsal when this happened. Right. Yeah, All but that doesn't matter. You, if you want to get Alec Baldwin, what a great way to get Alec Baldwin! It makes a great CSI episode, that's for sure. They said that they they said that some people were doing some gun range shooting off yeah. somewhere in that area. Before. Is that what you were saying, Kevin? Yeah. 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 That that's I heard, maybe. I heard that too. Yeah, maybe they're using that gun, and then they came back, and somebody still had a bullet in it or something. Like that. So for movies, why don't that bullet should have, that gun, gun should have never fire. that gun should have never left the area of the set. It right, should have right. been in. It should have been watched at all times. And you know, the they don't let the 
you know, that's what an armorer does. And she was new at the right. job and she didn't know what she was doing. Yes. Right. Uh, yes, Alan. Alan's our that's gun cool. expert so, here. Oh, yeah. Here we yeah, go. So Brandon Lee was was uh, one of the first people that got actually shot and killed because they used a 44 Magnum that, that actually could fire blanks. And that was mm -hmm. what they expected to be in there. But there was a live round. After that, why didn't they just start making all prop guns that are on the set to not be able to chamber a real round? Mm -hmm. right. They make them for training. We have them. The police have them for training. And they look well, and, and, and do everything, recoil and everything like a real gun. But it's a caliber that is only fires blanks. But, but yeah, that that's that, that's for starters. But, I mean, my feeling it's is... It's not a starter pistol. Is, it's, just, it's a regular gun, but it... In the chamber, the hole where the bullet goes into, it, it, it doesn't take a standard caliber. It takes an oddball, yeah. Yeah, an oddball caliber. And we use them for training because mm -hmm. they, 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 they cycle and everything and they make a, a loud noise, but they don't fire anything. Well, I mean, uh, why, why do you even have to put a bullet in there at all? I mean, uh, you can. Yeah, they could, you, you think they could add the noise afterwards? You add the noise afterwards and you have the actor do the oh. recoil. Yeah. You know? All he has to do is take the gun and go boom like that, right? Yep. You know. It usually takes death to cause safety. Think about a an yeah. intersection that is uncontrolled, no traffic light, no stop sign. They usually have to have somebody or somebody's killed in that intersection before they put up a stop sign or a stoplight in this country. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean the thing is that you gotta remember that movies are fake. Okay, for the most part. Okay. You know. What you're watching is a is, is a fake anything, but sometimes they are really dangerous. I mean, you have car stunts, and there are people who have been killed doing car stunts, yeah. but you don't expect that to happen, you know. But it does. Um, <laughs> but you don't. It's not necessarily anybody's fault except that the stunt went wrong. You know. Or the stunt coordinators. Well, well you remember the most famous one. The you remember the, you remember the Twilight Zone incident. In which they yeah. had a helicopter. Vic Morrow, yeah. Vic Morrow, Morrow got yeah. killed, and and two kids with him. Yeah, because a helicopter that was supposed to be flying overhead, you know, as part of the scene, yeah. uh, lost its engine or something and came down, and they got their heads chopped off by the by the Whoa. blades. By the rotors. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I in that case they did charge uh, the uh, director, uh, but he was finally I think found not guilty. That it wasn't his. It wasn't his fault, and I think it was. It could have been the pilot's fault, but I think the pilot got killed, didn't he? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. So I mean, it was a. It, it was a no-win situation there. I mean, it was. Terrible. Well, it was a no-fault situation. I, yeah. I think the the helicopter just lost power, and that happens in real life too. They yeah. lose power, and they, you know, if they're high enough up and. They can auto rotate, and if they're not, the thing falls like a rock and hits the ground. And Vic Morrow and these two kids were being filmed right under it, and it came down. Crashed, probably, killed. probably in this day and age, Vic Morrow would still be alive. And the reason he'd still be alive is we have special effects that can do all of that in a computer. Yeah. Okay. CGI. Yeah. yeah. In those days, we did everything as practical effects. Absolutely. You know? And and uh, it was pretty. It was pretty. Uh, you know, the terrible situation. But that's another case where somebody got killed. It happens. I mean, it happened to Brandon Lee. And uh, I think we can name some other people that it happened to as well. Anyway, let me just start the theme here. I know you can't hear it and I can't figure out why because you can hear me. So I, we, we had no subject tonight. I listened to last night's show yes, uh, today and drive to Lodi. Mm -hmm. And you guys were talking about otters all night. I was really disappointed. There's no topic tonight. Oh yeah, well, there, yeah. We didn't bring up a topic. Well, next on Thursday nights, it's gonna be uh, a, a topic. topic with, night. I think we're gonna try to get to wear a special shirt for Thursday nights, okay? And, and we'll talk uh, probably um, Wednesday. I think we'll talk weasels. Is what we'll do. Uh, yeah, weasels. And and uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, I'll probably de get demonetized because we'll have to mention Trump if we're talking about weasels. Mm -hmm. You know, so took the words out of my mouth. Yeah, I beat you to it, huh? You yeah, did. yeah, yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, uh, that's it for another show, a week of, of absolute uh, great programming here on GabNet. 
Award winning. Award winning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I got my Grammys already, and I'm never giving them back. Okay. Emmys. Although, they, Grammys. although they're starting to get a little tarnished, and the the uh, the plaque Emmys. that says what it's for is starting to fade. But they're Emmys, not Grammys. The Emmys. Excuse me. Did I say Grammys? You said yeah. Grammys. Yeah. <laughs> You anyway, thank you, Charlene. Appreciate you calling tonight. Uh, thank you to Jeff for being here. Uh, Kevin, good to see you. What's the t-shirt? Athletics Baseball. It says yeah. Oakland A's. R.I.P. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, thank you, Josh. Thank you to Charlie Wallace. Thank you to our old friend, uh, uh, Mr. Vernon Nunn. Uh, Alan, always a pleasure having you here. Oh. And Brian, always a pleasure having you here. Everybody, give yourself a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight, folks. Let me just uh, get rid of them here. There we go. And exit meeting for all. Anyway, that's it for tonight. I'll see you again on Monday with the pop-up show at 4 o'clock on Facebook, and then I'll see you right back here again next week on the in, uh, right, uh, right before the intersection with Jack Bishop, which is next. Uh, next Wednesday, I tried to get it all in at one time. Uh, 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 next uh, Wednesday at 10:30, same time, same station in life. And as always, if you see her, you know, tell her I love her. Okay. Good night, everybody. Have a nice weekend. <laughs>